Last time on the Wheel of Time Craft Along. Hello, denizens of the internet, or should I say the Wheel of Time enthusiasts? As the internet is an interesting place with whatever the latest TV or show or movie hype train is, as such I've fallen down a rabbit hole in a way that has been almost two decades in the making. I had initially come across the series back when I was in high school, around 1995 or so, coming across the first book in the series of The Wheel of Time. And now a continuation of where we left off. We're going to take the time to do a recap of the general design for those of you who are just joining us. Please note that you do not have to spin your own yarn. You don't have to knit or crochet your shawl. You can use whatever materials you have available to you. You can even sew your shawl if you choose to do so, which I may showcase how to do so at a later date. The overall shape of your shawl, provided that you aren't making the shawl for the armalin seat, is a triangle base, preferably in the color of your Aja that you associate the most with, a decorative element or pattern of your choice, and the fringe of the color of the Aja that you associate with, as well as the white flame of Tarvalon, that teardrop shape in the middle, as large or as small as you prefer. Most shawls that I've seen people make on the internet have the teardrop quite big. For this specific project, I will be spinning all of my own yarn, which is merino and merino silk blends, using a looped ply. I will also be using circular needles that are a US size 8 or a 5.00 millimeters for those of you who use metric. I'm going to be using adjustable circular needles to add more length as needed as the shawl gets wider as I knit each row, as I will be increasing each row regularly. The extra cable in the middle will also help to distribute the weight of the project to make it a bit easier to knit as it gets bigger. For those of you who are knitting your shawl like I am, you can use any pattern that you choose that is a triangle shape in any weight of yarn that you prefer, as well as any fiber content that you prefer or have access to. Store-bought is perfectly acceptable for this project. The pattern that I'm using is extremely basic and I will admit that my cast on was a little bit messy, but at the very, it's at the very bottom of the shawl, so I don't think anybody will notice, you know, except for the entirety of the internet. But you know, it's okay to make mistakes. I'm sure that I flipped a stitch somewhere in between or maybe dropped one and picked it back up. Um, that kind of gives it a little bit more of a handmade feel to it. This is just a general demonstration of my method of casting on which is a knit cast on for the first few stitches. There are some of you who may have other cast on methods that you like, um, such as the long tail cast on, but I found this method just looked a little neater. For this demonstration, I am using a basic acrylic yarn, um, specifically the Bernat Super Value type of yarn for those of you who are interested in what I was using for this demo. Now on to the patterning. Once I have the base three stitches made, I knit the entire next row. On the third row, I had knit one, increased by one stitch using a yarn forward back increase, where you knit the increase forward, sort of like purling, then you move the stitch to the back to finish the stitch as if you were knitting a regular stitch, and then you do the same thing to the last stitch on the row. Bringing your total current stitch count up to five. Then on the third row, knit one, and then knit using the forward back increase to the end of the row for each stitch. For this pattern, you should always keep an odd number of stitches, which is going to be super key for when we get into the patterning on the sides. So at this point, you should have nine stitches on your needles. At this point, you're going to want to get some stitch markers, which will show you where your next increase is going to be. This will be handy so you don't lose your place. They can be any size so long as it loops over top and onto your knitting needles. For the patterning, knit the next three stitches in the row and set your stitch marker into place. Then 
Do a yarn over increase and knit your next set of stitches until you reach three stitches before the end of your row. Then yarn over again, add your stitch marker, and then knit the last three stitches to the end and then turn your work over. On the next row, knit the first three stitches, then move your stitch marker over and purl the next set of stitches to the second stitch marker. Then move the marker over so it's not in your way and knit the last three stitches. You will always knit the first and last three stitches regardless of what row you're on, with the exception of the very last three rows of your triangle base. On the knit rows, this is where you add your yarn over. You do this until you get a shell that's big enough for a triangle as big as you want it to be. So to reiterate or to condense the pattern for you, the pattern is knit three stitches, yarn over after the stitch marker, knit the row to the second stitch marker, yarn over again, move the stitch marker out of the way, knit the last three stitches and turn your work around. Then the next row is knit three stitches, move the stitch marker over, purl to the next marker, Move your marker over and then knit the last three stitches, turn it over and repeat. And now for a knitting montage of the months that it took to make the base. So I apologize in advance if this audio is not the most ideal because I do have an air conditioner running because it's hecking hot out. Um, so I've finished the V so you can see the edging and then my increases and then my uh, other increase and then the rest of the edging. Uh, this, is, this is the back. Essentially I have it folded over itself a couple of times. The entire body of the shawl is made. I just got to figure out how I'm going to embroider this and what sort of design I'm going to embroider. Essentially, because I want to use this for day-to-day -day wear, I can't have the fringe too long. I'm only thinking maybe like two or three inches max, and then at some point further up the shawl so that it doesn't impede on my arm. So essentially, um, it'll start, like the wedge for the tassels will start long, and then as I go further up, it'll get short. I've been working on the ties to tie this on for forever and an age, and I still haven't even gotten one of the sides done, and I have to make two of them. So I'm going to take a pause 
and we're going to work on the motif here. Now I don't have a lot of yarn to work with. This is what I have for decorative purposes. Um, there's some bamboo in there, there's some silk in there, there's uh, Coria del Merino. Some of it's a little coarser than others, but that is kind of the point because I essentially wanted a little bit of a slight texture difference, but I also wanted to not use anything that was, um, like, it, it's just decoration. So, uh, I need to plan out the motif here. Now it has been suggested that I do a maple leaf. I don't know how big of a maple leaf I want to make this because essentially I want this to go along the V and then I will be adding tassels to this at some point. So I may have to break out the stitch markers to figure out how to do this. What I will be doing is I will be using a crochet hook to top stitch all of this down. I mean, I could use embroidery techniques. You can use embroidery techniques if you want to. And again, this is simply for flair. This is up, entirely up to you if you want to do this step. This is suggested that it is a thing in any of the shawls during throughout the books that were mentioned. Uh, flower motifs or leaf motifs or things like that. It, it depends on which book and I did look up the passages because it has been a very long time since I've read the Wheel of Time series and no, for anybody who's wondering, I haven't gotten even book through book one. I've only haven't even gotten through a quarter of book one again. But I did watch the entire series so far. I hope they come out with season two soon. So I have, uh, I'm gonna grab some stitch markers. Uh, stitch markers are essentially, stitch markers are exactly just that. So what these do is they hold the placement of where your stitches are supposed to go or how many rows you've done. Uh, typically I use them for socks. So as you can see here, I'm working on a pair of socks and each one of these stitch markers here represents a row of 10 just so I can follow my own patterns so I know where I've left off. If you do not have stitch markers, you can always use safety pins. Crafter's best friend. I use these for quite a many things. Now, I don't have a fancy container. I just have them sitting in a Pringles tin. Not sponsored, by the way. I will take a couple of minutes to pattern this out, and then I will get out my crochet hook and see what I can come up with in terms of getting all this figured out. A few moments later. Alright, so I did find a couple of beads, um, the leaf the leaf shaped beads that I mentioned. Um, four of them are yellow colored. One of them is kind of like a purpley color on the back. I'm not sure how well that picks up in the camera. That's not the purpley one. Where's the purpley one? There's the purpley one. It's the lighting in here isn't the best, but I've got to figure out where I want to put them. The design here is a little bit shuff shuffled over, 
So I'm kind of wondering if I just make like a train of beads here and then maybe put, I don't know, I'll find something else to put there maybe. Maybe I'll do that. There we go. That actually looks nice. Okay, I think that's the, the configuration I'm gonna go with. So this is the configuration I've decided to go with. And I've, oops, sorry for the shaky cam. I don't have any of my, my stands available, my uh, tripods, cause they're being monopolized right now. Uh, so these are the configurations for the beads I've had it set up for. I've pinned them into place and I'm just gonna sew those down. So I will be back in a bit once that is sewn. So we have the base of the shawl mostly constructed. I haven't put the tassels on yet because I still have to see the positioning of where I want the tassels to go and how long I need to make them. But in the meantime, um, I have been, I've decided to deviate from my original plan um, because the ties are a structural crucial positioning that I need. What I've done is, uh, as you can see, the primary of the shawl is already knitted. This is the very top of the shawl that goes across the back of the neck, essentially. Now, I have another project that I've done uh, that I overestimated how much of the silk shank tongue taffeta that I needed. Imagine trying to say that like three times fast. Silk shank tongue taffeta, silk shank tongue See, I can't even say it. Silk shank tongue taffeta. So that's what this is. And what I have done here is I've made a couple of ties. Now, because the shawl itself has silk blended into it, as you could possibly see, because it's quite shiny in a couple of spots, uh, that is the silk. And I'm gonna add this to it. So what I'm going to do to hopefully alleviate a little bit of the strain, but also give myself a length, is I've made some ties out of the silk and they are double-sided, double so it's two pieces folded, but I've also reinforced it with some top stitching here, and I've made it into a point, so it looks pretty when I go to tie it. With any luck, and hopefully because of the stretch of the, the, the fabric from the shawl, because it's been knitted, that will help to make it so it's easier to wrap around. And I'm going to sew it by hand here. I'm gonna give myself a good square run off here so then that way it doesn't pull too much on it and doesn't warp it too much. I, I still have to do the tassels so let me get into sewing this. Much later. What's this? Me repping another YouTuber's merch? Shout out to the Threadbanger team if you're watching this. Uh, you have been an inspiration over the many many years that I've been doing crafts. I'm also glad to see that Rob and Corinne have the uh, art gallery up and running. That is very awesome. Um, all right, so what we're going to do is I'm going to start crocheting and I have my crochet hook here uh, I'm going to start here with the smallest amount, which is the two inch and Then I'm gonna move to the three inch marker and then the four inch marker to the end and then work my way back up the other side um, and I have a couple of balls of yarn, but I may need to spin more We'll have to see how much I have. So I'm going to work on this. Um, this is the slide rule that I have for how long I have to make each piece because it's essentially going to be doubled up. Uh, so this is essentially my slide ruler for how long I have to make each strip to double up and twist and stuff. Um, from what I understand, I have to make each length two and a half times the length that I need to twist. So if I'm doing a two inch, I have to make it four and a, my math is not braining today. So yeah, apparently I don't know how to math. So for the first segment here that I'm gonna be working on, I have to make each piece five inches. Um, I'm going to put on something to watch and roll into this uh, construction. You'll see how I'm doing this as I'm working it through. I'll probably do a couple of stitches and then roll into a time lapse. So, uh, here we go.
And now that we have our shawl completed and all the decorations are on it, the tassels are done, the ties are done, and the pin is done, we're going to attach it using the clasps on the back in multiple places so this will not move. Thank you for joining me on this Wheel of Time adventure. Don't worry, I will have some Dragon Reborn content coming. For those of you who would like to join me on this make-along, please use the hashtag WOTCraftalong for your own Aes Sedai or Wheel of Time making crafting journey. Also, please note that I do have a Ko-Fi and the information for my Ko-Fi page is in the description box down below. In, in the meantime, I'm going to go inside and warm up because it may get more snowy i'm not sure in the meantime if you like and enjoy what you see please like and subscribe every little bit helps and also please comment down below what you're working on in the meantime i've been kiruna this is kiruna's diy and i'll see you later bye